Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. So I went to the phone and I took the true tone off and what do you know, it looks way better on the screen. It looks normal. Um, because like this phone, my actual phone, I took true tone off because I didn't like how it looked. But since I had both phones side by side, especially like later at night, um, I just never really liked how it looked. But I just kept forgetting to turn it off. So it's off, so I'm, I'm a little bit more happy with how things look on that. So, and it looks like the Moment app has been rock, leaves rock solid. Um, I might try not the next episode, which will be the last before I record Halloween. I might try to see how the Filmic Pro app works, but guarantee you for the Halloween episode, I'm either going to use Moment or I'm going to use um, the, um, the, the native app, but I'll probably use the Moment app because I kind of like how things look on the screen there. All right, so um, let's go to the wine. All right, so this wine, uh, another one with a little bit of age, but it's the youngest of the wines we're trying today. So this is the 2014 Domaine du Penlois, Penlois Beaujolais Village Lancy. Um, paid $21.45 at Som Select, so it was basically like a $19 bottle of wine. Um, now, it says it's, well... He, uh, Cobble, Ian Cobble, in his tasting notes says, um, said it was a, that they, you know, that this is a crew Beaujolais, but it doesn't have a crew on it. And actually, when I looked up this wine, uh, when I was getting, trying to look for other things other than Psalm Select, the label looks different. It says Lancy on it. So, but this is the only, <laughs> this is the only wine I have with, from this producer. So it has to be this one. I May mean, I look through all my wines? Anyway, uh, so let's talk about it. Oh, I paid, yeah, I said I paid uh, $21.45. So that also should be like 19 bucks when you add in the tax and insurance. Now, this year, uh, doing the summer hold, uh, they have been doing, adding $2.50 per order. And since I only order one bottle at a time normally, it's kind of getting expensive now. Even though I still only pay, I usually buy between 20 and $30 on the wines. Um, especially, especially now. Um, I mean, because I, since I don't work in restaurants anymore, I'm not making restaurant money. So again, another reason if you want to throw some duckets my way for producing all this awesome content for you, uh, and traveling to places like Oregon, um, that would be outstanding. Uh, I mean, if you like what I'm doing, if, if not, no worries. Um, all right, so let's look at a little bit about uh, the history of this winery. So let's see here. So they visited these guys, I guess, uh, a year or two ago. And it was one of those things where they were hanging out in, in uh, Beaujolais. And um, uh, they were like, say, who, you know, they were like asking other people, like, whose wine should we be trying? And they were like, brought this dude over. Um, his name is, uh, Sebastian Besson and they brought him over and, uh, then they went and go tasted his wines and they were like, dude, we want your wines. And then they like left and then came back, I guess, made the deal. Um, but in, in the, in the beginning part, he talks to Cobble talks about how his staff had him blind this wine and he was totally taking this to like be a Cote de Nuit or a Cote de Bone, basically Pinot. Um, so he's like excited. He got excited because it's more Pinot like than Gamay like. And that's the thing about Gamay, man. It can be like super Pinot-like. Um, when you're getting blind tasted on this stuff, um, you can totally confuse Gamay for Pinot Noir. Um, I do kind of, kind of in my head, and I think a lot of people are similar, where Beaujolais is kind of like this Pinot Noir light in the sense that it's, 
it's less expensive Pinot Noir. Like, like a Cru Beaujolais, a true Cru Beaujolais, not this one, because this actually gets grapes from multiple Cru. Um, but a true Cru Beaujolais could be like the equivalent of like a Premier Cru Pinot in quality level, but it's not, it's not as expensive. So, all right. Maybe not to that extreme, but pretty close. Uh, so it says uh, the wine uh, or uh, blah, blah, blah. So this particular wine, which uh, the winemaker calls his favorite bottling of all the wines that he bottles, is from their family-owned 60 to 90-year-old vines in Lancy, a small, supremely located village that is wedged between the crews of Morgan, Fleury, and moulin avant uh, moulin avant um, it's sustainably farmed, purely crafted, and spent nearly four years developing all of its textured and savory Burgundian qualities in their very own cellars. Because remember, uh, Beaujolais is part of Burgundy, officially. They may not, like, want to agree on that, you know, the people of Burgundy and Beaujolais, but they, they're, 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 all, they're, all Burg they're all Burgundians. Um, you know, the, the Beaujolais people want to think of themselves more of, like, Rhone, but they're not all in their own department because part of them is high, next, next department up. Um, let's see here. It's the same before I already said that. Thankfully, we stumbled upon this tiny domain. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's a smoking $40 plus dollar burgundy hiding behind a $20 Beaujolais label. So um, is there anything else about... So it says there are no novices when it comes to Beaujolais, the, the family. It all started when Patriarch Benoit Besson arrived in the small hamlet of Lancy during the advent of the Roaring Twenties, or his brother Paul was already tending family-owned vines. And it was there Benoit spearheaded the cultivation of Chardonnay, which is what white burgundy, I mean, what, yeah, it's white burgundy, but white Beaujolais is, is Chardonnay, in case you didn't know that. Um, a tradition that survived and still thrives to this day, but we've got Gamay here. And... The Bessons are now nearing 30 hectares of vines spread throughout a number of top crews. Now, um, and they've been around for almost 100 years since the Roaring Twenties. And let's see here. Heritage du Penlois is sourced from their oldest parcels within the well-situated village of Lancy, or Lancy, uh, which we already mentioned where, where it's at. The soils range from granite to iron-rich clay and... The Bessons rigorously farm with sustainable principles. Harvest is always conducted by hand. In 14, the old vine gamay was transported to the winery in small baskets, and fermentation occurred in temperature-controlled stainless steel for uh, 15 days. Uh, the wine was racked, underwent additional aging in neutral vessels, and then after bottling, they were laid to rest in the cellar and remained untouched until Homeboy went over there and grabbed it. Okay. So remember a few episodes I talked about, like, I don't have a favorite wine, but I do have some areas I kind of like a lot. Well, if you've been watching the, my show for a while, you know that Beaujolais is, like, definitely uh, up there. Like, kind of a top five areas of the world of wines that I tend to really enjoy. So, spice-driven. Not quite Christmas in the glass, but spice-driven. So I got some corkage in there too, which can happen with the Coravin because you're, you're you're penetrating the cork, and you might get some cork bits in the wine. It just doesn't happen all the time, but they're really really small. But um, I I noticed them today on this one, but I didn't notice them in the other ones. And when the corks are a little bit older, you have more of a chance of getting that. But this is the youngest of the wines I'm, do I'm doing today. Except for the Halloween episode, I know. Yeah, so a little spice driven, a little red fruit, dried, dried red fruit. But it's it it's not like I can really pull out some very specific things on the nose. It's more like spices, red fruit. That's about it. So let's taste it. Yeah, I would 
totally peg this as some really well-made, like, Cote Nui, like, Pinot Noir. It's kind of poopy, too. It's kind of a little bit of funk, which can be in Beaujolais. I just, I'm used to it being, not quite being Beaujolais, but being more in a, in a Pinot Noir sense. But it's still very spice-driven. And that's usually my my indicator that we're talking Beaujolais rather than than um, uh, Bur than Burgundy than than Pinot Noir. So that's usually my gamay marker versus Pinot is if it's just overwhelming spice like Christmas spice. Um, so like especially with like a clove and cinnamon type of of um, flavor aroma. Yeah, I mean, this dried red fruit, not as much cranberries I normally get from a Beaujolais, but more of the dried red fruit, kind of a dried cherry. That's why I, I could see putting this in Burgundy proper with Pinot Noir. Um, uh, somewhat woodsy, potpourri, cedar box, um, like just the clove, the cinnamon, um, cardamom. Those those types of those types of spices that are just like, you know, man, like, yeah, this thing is freaking delicious. Like, I just want to open this bottle and just like, ch I don't want to chug it, but I, just, I want to I want to enjoy it. I want to drink this. I want to drink this wine. So I'm super excited. I finally got to a wine that for tonight that I'm like I'm like digging. I cannot wait for the next for the next episode because it's an old wine, and it's probably going to be really stinky. Which I'm going to get excited about. But yeah, this wine's really nice. Yeah, super nice. All right, so um, I'm going to probably drink the rest of this, to be honest, because I'm getting close to... Uh, uh, there's a little bit of delay with, with, with the thing on the Moment app. I don't know why. Um, like, you know, the Vixie is exactly real time. The Filmic Pro is real time. And the camera app is real time. So I'm not sure why there's a delay. So that's probably why the audio is messed up. Anyway, so uh, anyway, that's going to do it for this episode. You can click the links above to friend me up. Click the links below to learn more about this wine. I do have a, I do have, there's a, there's a winery link. Um, not a whole lot about the wine in the winery there, but I'll give you a link to that. And um, throw some ducks my way. And we'll see everyone again next time.